What comes to mind when I say Son of God? Jesus, right? But what if I tell you that there was another person who was called the Son of God at the time when Jesus was born? Does that mean Jesus was inspired by him? Isn't that interesting? In this video, we are going to learn more about that person, how he got that name, his similarities with Jesus, and whether he was really a son of God or not. So make sure to watch this video till the end. Now before going into this video, there's an announcement to make. Our channel which was previously called History and Mythology Explained will be called Mythical History from now on. The reason for changing the name of this channel was that the previous name was too simple and many other channels with similar names already exist, which made it hard to get more reach among many people. Hope you guys understand. Now, let's get into this video. On the 23rd of September, 63 BC, a baby was born in the city of Rome. He was given the name Gaius Octavius. Both him, his paternal great-grandfather, who was a military tribune in Sicily during the Second Punic War, and his father, who was a governor of Macedonia, shared the same name. His mother, Asia, was the niece of Julius Caesar, a Roman general and statesman who later became the dictator of Rome. In September 45 BC, Caesar returned to Italy after his campaigns and filed his will, naming Gaius Octavius as his principal heir, leaving his vast estate and property including his name. It is worth noting that he also left a substantial gift to the citizens of Rome in his will. On March 15, 44 BC, Julius Caesar was assassinated by about 40 Roman senators. It was then called the Ides of March. After his death, he was declared a god by the Roman Senate. His death resulted in a long series of civil wars that ended in the death of the Roman Republic and the birth of the Roman Empire by Augustus Caesar, the first Roman Emperor. Wait a minute, who's Augustus Caesar? After Julius Caesar's death, Octavius was only 19. Even though he was young at that time, he accepted the inheritance from Caesar's will and was quickly plunged into the complicated world of Roman politics. He formed many strategic alliances, defeated his political rivals, and won a bitterly fought civil war, and at the Battle of Actium, he defeated Mark Antony and his Egyptian fleet. Instead of following Caesar's example and making himself dictator, Octavian in 27 BC founded the Principate, a system of monarchy headed by an emperor holding power for life, and the Senate awarded him with the name Augustus, meaning revered one. He's been considered as the first emperor of Rome, and as one of the greatest leaders in human history by many historians. Since he was the adopted son of Julius Caesar, who was called a god, Augustus was called Divi Filius, which means divine son or son of God. But what connects Augustus with Jesus Christ, the son of the real God according to the Bible? Before learning about that, let's see who else has held that title before. Many figures in the ancient world used the phrase Son of God to justify their political authority. Rulers and heroes were often treated as supernatural sons of a particular god among a polytheistic pantheon such as Zeus, Poseidon, Apollo, Hermes, Ares, and so on. One of the famous rulers to imply himself as a son of God was Alexander the Great. His mother, Olympias was said to have declared that Zeus impregnated her while she slept under an oak tree which was sacred to the god. So Alexander and many others started to believe that Alexander was a son of God or a demigod. He actively used the title son of Ammon Zeus, which was bestowed upon him by Egyptian priests of the god Ammon. Greek and Roman mythology contain many characters with both a human parent and a god parent like Hercules, whose father was Zeus, and Aeneas, whose mother was Venus. The concepts of demigods, sons and daughters of a god were commonly known and accepted in the ancient world. Gilgamesh, the hero of the world's first epic, the Epic of Gilgamesh, claimed to be of both human and divine descent. Thus, we can see that the concept of offspring of gods was known in the non-Christian religions and mythologies too. In polytheistic traditions, the son of god may mean the son of a god among the pantheon of gods. But in monotheism, son of God means the son of the only true God. 
the famous person be called the son of God in monotheistic religions is Jesus Christ. His birth date is not stated in the Gospels or in any historical reference, but most biblical scholars assume a year of birth between 6 and 04 BC. Augustus was ruling as the Emperor of Rome when Jesus Christ was born. The Gospel of Luke in the New Testament tells us that Caesar Augustus ordered a census taken of the entire Roman world, possibly for tax purposes. Jesus and Augustus Caesar are two very influential men in history. Arguably, both were the most influential men of their time, great leaders, idealists, and both were known as sons of God but in different contexts. Jesus was called the Son of God many times in the Bible. When the people coming to see John the Baptist while he was baptizing people in the Jordan River asked him whether he was the one that was prophesied, the one that would save them from the Roman Empire, he said, I have baptized you with but water, he will baptize you with the Spirit, which was a reference to Jesus. <laughs> Baptism is a form of spiritual purification through water that is still practiced by Christians. It isn't until after John says these things to the people that Jesus comes into the narrative. John the Baptist, standing in the Jordan River, would then baptize Jesus from Nazareth. Jesus was also called the Messiah in the first part of the book of Mark, which could be applied to the king of Israel, a high priest, and or a prophet. Many Christians even say that Jesus was God himself, quoting I and the Father are one. About Augustus and Jesus being called with the title, Son of God, and both living at the same, Many people say that maybe the New Testament was threatening the political authority of Caesar, son of the deified preceding emperor, but it is worth noting that Jesus was not called as the son of God while Augustus was still living. It was only after Augustus' death that Jesus was called with that title, since he was probably only a child when Augustus lived. But what do you think about this coincidence? Was it really a coincidence that both of them were called with the same title and lived in contemporary times? Comment down your thoughts. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to tap the thumbs up icon and share it with your friends and family. Hit that subscribe button and tap the bell icon to get notified whenever I upload a new video or short. I will see you again in a new video with a new topic to explain. Thanks for watching.